Hi there and welcome to learn A-level biology for free with Miss Estrick. This video is going through the structure of RNA and how that structure links to its function. If you are new here, click subscribe so you don't miss any of the latest videos that come up. So RNA is a polymer, so within the biological molecules topic, it does count as one of the polymers. And the monomer that it's made up of is a nucleotide. And this nucleotide contains a ribose sugar, which we can see here in the diagram. And ribose is a pentose sugar. And the darker circles are representing carbons. We've got one, two, three, four, five carbons. That is our pentose, our five carbons, and it is ribose. And you do have to know it is ribose because the R in RNA is what the um, ribose is representing. So the nitrogenous base, which is up here, and there's four possible nitrogenous bases that RNA can contain. And that's adenine, guanine, cytosine, or uracil. There's a phosphate group as well. So just that one phosphate group. So it's very similar in structure to DNA. The difference being that we have ribose instead of deoxyribose. And we have uracil instead of thymine. The function of RNA, there are multiple because there's three types of RNA which we'll look at, but in general it's to copy and transfer genetic information and one type of RNA combines with proteins to create ribosomes. So the three types of RNA, we have M, T and R RNA. And in this diagram alone we can already see two of them, we have mRNA, we have tRNA, but rRNA is not shown in this diagram. But I'm going to go through each of the three types to give you more detail. So we'll start with mRNA, and the M stands for messenger. So this mRNA, this polymer, is a copy of one gene in your DNA. And that is because inside of your nucleus, the DNA can slightly unravel at the start of protein synthesis and a copy of this unraveled DNA is made in what we call mRNA. And that's because your DNA is far too big to be able to come out of the nucleus to actually provide the genetic code to create proteins. So instead, just a copy of the gene of interest to make that one protein is copied into mRNA. So for that reason, mRNA is much shorter than DNA because mRNA is just a copy of the bases from one gene, whereas DNA contains all approximately 23,000 genes of a human. It will then be small enough, because it is that much shorter, to be able to leave the nucleus. And that is then where it can attach to the ribosome for the next stage of protein synthesis. So mRNA is very short-lived, and that's because as soon as genetic material leaves the nucleus, it's at risk of being exposed to enzymes which can hydrolyze those um, DNA or RNA polymers. So that's another reason why DNA can't leave the nucleus, but mRNA can. So mRNA lives just long enough to be able to code for the um, protein, and then it does get degraded. And when we say short-lived, we don't mean it's an actual living thing. Um, we just mean that that molecule is in existence for long enough. It's also single-stranded. And three bases on mRNA are what code for one specific amino acid. And we call those three bases codons. tRNA, now this is only found in the cytoplasm. It's also single-stranded, but the shape is very different. mRNA is a straight line, but tRNA folds in on itself to make what we describe as a clover shape as in the leaves that you'd see on a clover plant. So this clover leaf shape is held in place by hydrogen bonds, which we can see here as these lines um, in between the squares. 
The squares are representing different nucleotides within the polymer, and those lines are representing the intramolecular forces, which in this case are hydrogen bonds, holding that clover leaf shape in place. Now, the function of tRNA is to transfer amino acids, and that's what the T stands for, transfer RNA. And there are three exposed bases at the top, and this is where the amino acid attaches. So this is your amino acid attachment site, and each tRNA molecule can attach and bring a specific amino acid to the mRNA, which is attached to the ribosome. And this is controlled by complementary base pairing between the codon on mRNA and what we call the anticodon on tRNA. So tRNA has the three complementary bases to the codon, and that's how mRNA codes for a specific amino acid, because that GCC is what codes for the specific amino acid which is brought and delivered to that codon. Now the final type of RNA is ribosomal RNA, and there's not much to say about this. All you need to know is ribosomal RNA combines with protein to make ribosomes. So that is the function. It combines with a protein to make a ribosome. So the last thing that you could get questions on is comparing RNA as a biological molecule to DNA. But there are differences between the polymers but there's also differences between the monomers. So it's important that you read carefully what an exam question is asking you for. So that's what I've split the information into. The differences between the monomers are DNA contains thymine, whereas RNA contains uracil as one of the nitrogenous bases. DNA still contains a pentose sugar, but it's deoxyribose whereas RNA contains ribose. And we can see that here in the outside part of the diagram for the bases that the nucleotides contain. The differences between the polymers, DNA is much larger in length, it's much longer, because it contains all of your genes, the entire genome, whereas RNA is only a copy of one gene, or if we're talking about mRNA, it's just a copy of one gene, so it's much shorter. tRNA is also much shorter, even though it's not a copy of a gene, it is much shorter. The final thing is DNA is double-stranded, whereas RNA is single-stranded. So that is it for the structure of RNA and the function. Hope you found it helpful. If you have, please give this video a thumbs up.